Hey what's going on guys, this is Clement from Overall Sliders. I'm making this little video to uh, show you guys how to use your Acuvance Tachyon Area ESC. This is the uh, flagship ESC from Acuvance. Uh, this is also one of the most powerful in the market uh, because it does not have a current limit. So um, let's go really quick uh, over what we have right now in front of us. So we have my battery pack here my receiver in the back and my brushless motor. Uh, the brushless motor is also an Acuvance motor. This is the Luxon BS Dual uh, 10.5. Um, and uh, you can note that there is aftermarket bullets on the motor. Uh, from the factory, you will be getting these guys. Uh, you know, this is like a Tamiya style plug for the motors. Nothing wrong with these, just I prefer these guys over these little guys. Uh, you know, no big deal. Uh, also, the main brand of the ESC, you're going to get your switch and your receiver cable. Uh, also, you'll note that I have an aftermarket capacitor from Acuvance as well. This is the Chevalier Master. This is one of the best ones for rear-wheel drive application. So, from the factory, you'll be getting a simple search killer, which um, which is basically the, you know, the factory uh, version. Now, uh, let's go ahead and uh, go over how to calibrate the ESC. So for that, I'll be using my Sanwa MT4S, and uh, what I'm gonna do, uh, which I'm, you're not gonna see on screen, but I already have uh, a blank setup uh, set at zero everywhere. You know, zero trim, uh, EPS at 100 to make sure that the calibration goes, uh, you know, goes properly. So to calibrate the ESC, what you're gonna want to do, you're plugging your battery, you're gonna hold the button on the switch, and you're gonna turn the ESC on. It's gonna start blinking, and when it goes to a blinking green, that means that you're ready to start the calibration. So the first step you're gonna do, blinking green is your neutral point. Since you have a blank setup on your radio, then you should be fine. You can just go ahead and press the button, and you basically set your neutral. The blue LED is your full forward. So basically just, you know, pull the trigger as far as you can, like if you were to do if uh, you wanted to go forward, and hold it and press the button. Now we're gonna go full brake. Just hold the trigger, you know, push it all the way. Max brake in. Press the button. All the LEDs show up. That means you basically uh, completed the calibration of the ESC and you're good to go. So now, if I was to press the trigger to go forward, we got power and reverse. So we're good to go. So this is the basic setup, you know, basic calibration that you want to do every time uh, you open a brand new ESC. Okay, and we're back. So, right now, there is one specific thing that that ESC is telling you. You have the orange LED and the blue LED. The orange LED is basically telling you that it's on. The blue LED is telling you that you are in the switch programming mode which means that you can only use the button on the switch to set up the ESC so how do you get into the menus well right now in your uh, box of the ESC you have got this little manual um, I have it in PDF on my phone because I like to have it everywhere with me if I have to but basically it's gonna explain to you how to you know what what LEDs uh, means uh, in the menus. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna enter the main menu. So you're gonna press the button once and you're gonna see a green LED uh, flash. The green LED is basically the tuning, like the tune that's pre-programmed in the ESC. Uh, there is four pre-programmed tune. You got a drift tune, touring tune, off-road, and a boost turbo disable in case you're racing and you're not allowed to use turbo. And there is also two user programmable uh, tunes in there. So this is the green one. Then we're going to move over to the drive frequency. Drive frequency is the blue. So see, like you just press the button once and you're going to switch to the next uh, setting. Now you're going to see this one, it blinks blue to tell you that this is your drive frequency and then it's going to light up a bunch of LEDs. See, right now I have four LEDs. What that means in the, in the manual, it will tell you this is the frequency of 16 kilohertz. If I wanted to change that, let's say I want a drive frequency of 2 kilohertz, this is what you're going to do. You're going to hold the button for more than 4 seconds. And what's going to happen is, it's going to, come on buddy, 
is it in yes okay you didn't really see the transition but <laughs> so now it's telling you you're at 16 kilohertz but I want 2 kilohertz so I'm just gonna press the button once there you go that's 2 kilohertz that's 4 kilohertz 8 kilohertz and 16 kilohertz those are the four program uh, four program uh, programmable settings you have in the ESC uh, so let's say we're gonna do I'm gonna do 8 kilohertz just to change it for this you know for the heck of it once you're done, you hold the button for more than four seconds, and we're back to the main menu. Now we're gonna go ahead to initial speed. Initial speed is gonna be the red LED. You have three settings for this one, which is gonna be 0%, 10%, and 20%. Your initial speed is basically how much throttle you're gonna be getting uh, as soon as you press the trigger. And by the way, I didn't explain that, but the drive frequency is basically the it's it's almost like a ACC forward you would have on a Futaba. It's almost like um, it's like a the aggressiveness of your throttle basically. So right now on my uh, initial speed, I have 10% initial speed. What if I wanted to change it to zero? Well, I'm gonna hold it for four seconds and let go. And now I can change it to 20% or zero percent. I personally like to have it at 0% because it gives you, I guess, a smoother throttle from the get-go. So I'm going to go with that. Hold it for seconds. And we're back to the main menu. Now you're going to go to... Next setting is the brake, the neutral brake power. So everybody knows what neutral brake does. This is almost like, a, like an engine brake, pretty much. Now, uh, I'm not going to mess with that. Uh, let's see, what do we have? 20%? Oh, actually, you know what? Let's change it. I don't like 20%. I don't like neutral brake at all. So we're gonna go to zero. So you see this one? It actually has to like it has more than one more than four settings. It actually has five settings. Alright, so I'm gonna keep it at zero. The green LED is zero, and I'm gonna hold it for four seconds. We're back to the main menu. Alright. Initial brake power. Initial brake power, we have 30%. Wow, that's a lot. So let's change it too. We're going to go and we're going to change that to 6% initial brake. That's pretty good. That's the first setting. Now, all those values that I'm telling you, 6%, 10%, those are in the manual. Uh, you're going to see them right here. So if you look in the manual, those settings, I don't know if it's doing the autofocus on it. But anyway, this is where your values are going to be. So you're just going to... You're just gonna go in there and look it up and see see what you get, okay? Uh, and then we're gonna go to what do we have? Full break, all right? So full break, we have a hundred percent. That's all the LEDs. Uh, cut off voltage, very important when you use your lipos. You want to preserve your lipos as long as you can. Personally, I like to run my cutoff as high as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and oh, what did I do? I reset it. Damn crap. <laughs> All right, so I pressed it twice and I messed up. So let's go ahead and do it again. Let's go back. Let's see, and I was at my cutoff voltage. All right, so cutoff voltage is 3.2 right now. I'm gonna hold this for four seconds. And we're gonna change it to 3.4 keep the voltage high as possible all right back to the main menu uh, reverse drive on off so this is your operation mode basically is if you want just reverse forward uh, for a crawler for example or if you want to reverse the rotation of the motor which is one of the features of that ESC is you can run the motor uh, forward you know like you would normally but if you had the gears in your car that were flipped you can reverse that in the ESC now you gotta be careful when you do that because the timing you have in the back of the motor, so you have, if you have adjustable timing on the can, see see this, right now it's at 20%. So if I was to flip it, it would actually become 30% because the timing becomes, uh, it becomes backward when you do that. So you gotta be careful, you know, because if you have zero timing on the can and you reverse your rotation in the ESC, now you're getting 50 on that motor. So that's gonna take off and climb up the walls and we don't really want that. So what's next? We have your boost. All right, so now we're gonna start getting into the fun, the fun stuff. So boost, you can go all the way to uh, 50%. Right now, 
on that tune, it's disabled. That's the first setting. But if I wanted some boost, I could add some. Uh, next setting is going to be your turbo start RPM. So that's the RPM that the turbo starts at. Next setting you have is your boost power. And then your full turbo timing, which right now is set at 5%. And the last two we're going to have is going to be the turbo power and the turbo start time. So the start time is just a delay. It's like a turbo lag kind of. Now, once you have modified all those settings, well, how do you save it? So the way you save it is you're going to press the button four times really quick. That's the way to save it. If I didn't want to save it, you can press it three times really quick and it will go back to the neutral. The, I mean, the you know, what you were at before. But because I want to save my change that I made, I'm going to press it four times. There you go. It's blinking four times. And now it's showing you the green LED. And if I press the button, it goes to the orange LED. What that is, is your user program settings. So what it tells you is like, I'm going to save the tune on the program one. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, program one. Or if I want to save it on another one, program two. So that allows you to have some pre-programmed tunes saved in your ESC. And if you want to switch them, well, you can go back to the, the first menu, which is the one that loads the factory tunes, and you will have access to your two tunes. So you just, you know, pick one of them and, you know, just hold the button four seconds. And we're back on. So now there you go. I got my settings and... All right, and we're good to go. So this is how you set it up with the button. Uh, it's kind of a pain, I'm not going to lie. I mean, it's uh, it's it's a lot to take in. There is a lot of settings in there. Uh, so, you know, you, you got to play with it and find what's appropriate for your car. And, uh, you know, depending on what you want, just, uh, you know, get it uh, fine-tuned. All right. So and we're back. All right. So now, what do we have? All right, we're going to try to play with this little guy right here. This is the Tau 2. So the Tau 2 is basically the programming card for the the Tachyon area. It's a beast of a programmer. I mean, you can do so much stuff in it. It's pretty insane. Um, so before you even play with that, there is something you need to do on your ESC. Remember I told you there is that blue LED that's the switch mode programming? Well, if you keep it like this, Everything you do on there and you put on that ESC will not work. So what you're going to do is you're going to hold the button for four seconds. See how we switch to red? That's card programming mode. That means that now, if you plug the cable in your air, uh, in your towel too, you can flash it and you can set up your programming. So let's go ahead and look a little bit at the settings we have in the towel. So you have your Bluetooth. Right now, we're not going to use that. We're just going to go with the basic settings. Let's say you have the basic towel. You didn't buy it with the brain. Uh, I don't want to confuse you guys with that yet. So we're going to go to the ESC set mode. And here you see you have your setting mode, your data link, and your preview. So let's see. I want to just go and see the setting mode. All right, so we got off-road, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, drift, touring, non-boost, and micro SD card. There is a little micro SD on the side of the Tau 2 right here, and you can basically save your tunes in there, uh, and you can save a ton of them. So let's see what I have in there. All right, I got some tune presets already. So uh, we're going to put a tune that I have on my OER. So I'm going to press OK. And this is the tune that I have in there. So all those settings that we went over earlier uh, with the switch, you have them here as well. And some more. The thing is, uh, you have a lot more uh, finer adjustment because uh, if you look at, for example, the drive frequency, which is the first setting, mine is set up at 4 kilohertz, but you can go past 16 kilohertz, which is the maximum you can set up with the switch. But if I wanted to, I could go as high as 32 kilohertz, which is the finest you can get. If it lets me, um, all right. Now, if I want to back out of this, you just press OK twice, and you're back at the main menu. So now, see, I can basically set up my um, 
my settings right here and you know we're good to go no rev limiter which is an option that's added with the towel you don't get that with the switch so you get the rev limiter and uh, you're gonna get your turbo start time off and on turbo slope turbo rpm turbo timing uh the activation if you want rpm um if you want uh what's it called rpm or the full throttle in or if you just want the full throttle and rpm throttle boost control this is i wouldn't call it it's like a like a like a launch control but kind of basically it's um it smooths out your uh throttle when you have a lot of boost so instead of having like a, a huge amount of boost that you unleash when you pass a certain point uh this kind of you know ramps it up you know in a nice way uh, this is your boost RPM start and end, the amount of timing you're putting, cut off voltage. I mean, everything that you have on the switch is in that little box here. So right now, let's say I want to flash that onto my ESC. Well, what you're going to do is you hold the button first because you did some changes, let's say. And uh, we're going to save this one. All right, I'm going to save it. You can rename it if you want. I'm going to name it whatever, test. All right, that's going to be a test tune. Save it. Test complete. Okay. You're going to go to the data link mode. So the data link mode is what you're going to use to flash the area with the towel. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the cable out of your receiver. There you go. I'm going to bring that back in. You're going to plug it in the bottom of the towel too. So it's black, red, and white. Make sure that you plug it right. And uh, if you have the case like me, sometimes it gets kind of in the way, so just be careful. And you're gonna press data link. And we're gonna go to my micro SD card. And I'm gonna put the test tune. So I want you guys to pay attention to the LEDs when I flash it, because this is how you know if it flashed right or it didn't flash right. I'm gonna press enter, synchronize it. I don't have the Bluetooth, so I'm gonna go wired. Is, you know please connect the cable we have it connected press ok please wait complete see how the LED turn off and kind of reboots that's what you want to see you want to make sure you see that every time you flash a tune sometime uh, for some reason that I cannot explain uh, you will see it go complete and it won't reboot on the ESC that means that the tune did not go through it happens sometime um, I'm assuming this is because the cable moves a little bit and you get a connection break uh, it's not that big of a deal. You can just reflash it. That does not do any damage or anything to the ESC. So you can just go ahead and, and you know, do it again. Now, uh, if you want to verify that it went in, what you can do is you can do a preview. The preview will let you see what's on the ESC. So we're going to do a wired preview because we don't have the Bluetooth brain. And connect the cable. Yes, we're already connected. Press OK. And there you go all your settings are showing on the screen so this is a good way to make sure that you know all of your settings you had made in the towel are there and uh, you didn't miss anything if you want to edit it you can go ahead enter the menu and change all of those settings and hold the enter button and you can overwrite what's on there or you can save it as a tune on the towel or you can just cancel and if you just cancel it goes back to the main menu if you're happy with it so this is how you can set it up with the towel. Now I'm going to unplug that, plug it back into my receiver right here. Make sure I plug it in the right place. And did I plug it in the right plug? Let's make sure of that. This is my channel two. All right. Okay, so well, we're going to give it a little reset make sure that I got everything right <laughs> all right Ooh, angry so in this setup I do run an insane amount of boost what I would recommend is be careful with the boost that you don't want to blow up your motor you're gonna turn the can timing off in that specific setting I'm gonna pull that guy out pretty quick and we're gonna turn the can timing down. okay we're back so now 
we're gonna try to set it up with the Bluetooth brain so what the Bluetooth brain does it basically allows you to do everything we just did with the Tau 2 but wirelessly now the Bluetooth brain will bring a couple accessories uh, for, well first we get your brain and you're gonna get a special cable that's gonna go in between the receiver cable and your receiver uh, I'm gonna show you how to plug it right now so what you're gonna want to do you're gonna plug it you know the big end right here and you see there is like a third I'm sorry a fourth wire that's in here see the little fourth wire this is gonna go on the side of the brain once you have it plugged and then this guy goes on your throttle channel 2 so we're gonna plug this in there there you go all right so we're good to go now how do we install the brain under the ESC you're gonna find those little screws they're right here you're gonna take those off you're gonna take the brain and you can see there is a plug right here there is a little boot cover you're gonna take that off and then you will just go and bring your brain right here and you have three long screws that are provided with the brain and you just put the three new screws in it and you're good to go I'm not gonna put them in just for the video but uh, just to give you an idea you know and then that fourth wire it comes right here and it plugs on the side as you can see on the side there is a bunch of ports this one has a single pin right here and that's the one you want to plug it into so let's do this we have it plugged we're good to go we're gonna plug the battery there you go and we're gonna turn that on and what you're gonna see is that the ESC boots up and there is a little blue light on the bottom see how it's flashing fast like that that means that the brain is not paired with the Tau 2 so how do we do this well to pair the Bluetooth brain with the Tau 2 you're gonna look on the side right here there's a little code it's a pin code and that's a code that's proprietary to each brain this is the code you're gonna have to put in your Tau 2 to pair it with the brain so I'm gonna go in there turn it on and you're gonna go to Bluetooth now I already paired it so you see it slowed down now it's a slow uh, flash that means it's paired with the Tau 2 but if I was to pair it you know if you hadn't done it from the factory you're gonna go into the Bluetooth set node which is the first um, icon on the top left and you're gonna enter the code that's on the side so the code here uh, let's see if I remember it it's 43368 okay you're gonna press OK it's gonna tell you pairing and you give it a couple seconds now it's already paired so I you know most likely it's not gonna do anything it's just gonna tell you that it paired it and that's it now the difference is when you turn it on without the Bluetooth brain that icon on top left is gray once you connect it to the brain it turns blue to show you that you're connected so see right now it just tells me pairing completed I just did it again just for the heck of it so now you can go into your set mode and you can do a preview with the Bluetooth click OK and it's gonna pull your tune straight out of the towel see there you go boom and you can set up all your stuff now if I wanted to edit it I can go in there and change my data let's put 20 kilohertz just for the heck of it and then I can hold enter it's gonna ask me if I want to override it on the ESC or if I want to save it on the towel I'm gonna override it and once it does it it's gonna tell you it's complete and then this is gonna reboot see how it reboots just like when you do it with the wire that's the same thing here so again just pay attention to those LEDs make sure you know you get your confirmation that yeah it happens now what else can you do with the tower 2 let's go back to the main menu there is this function here that's called data logger so what does the data logger do it records all the data that comes out of the ESC you can do it on a run so for example you can keep uh, you can set it up to see have the interval time display time the alerts the speed and all that stuff and you're gonna tell it start logging and then you go and drive and when you're done you stop logging and you can read the files or what you can do if you want to set up uh, for example your rev limiter at a certain you know RPM well you're gonna do real-time data you can set up the interval if you want it to be super precise put 0.2 second 
Now this is live right now. So if I were to take my radio and start going forward, see how I'm getting real time RPM? See right now 4000, but if I was to go full speed, see I get max of 34,000 RPM. So I could set my rev limiter, let's say at 32. So now I'm gonna go back, go to my set mode, do preview to see what's on the ESC directly. Edit, I'm gonna go all the way down to my rev limiter. I know a lot of you guys are watching this video because you want to know how to set up that damn rev limiter well here. <laughs> Pay attention to that because that's what you want to look at. So you're going to go and set it up at, let's say, if we're going to do 32,000. Just so you guys can hear it. All right, 32,000. Press enter, hold it, overwrite it. There you go. Reboot. All right, now listen. That's a very fast rev limiter. If I wanted it to be a lot louder, I would have to raise the RPM limit and see how high the motor can go. If I want it to be louder, that's all done via the can timing and the blade. The faster your motor spin, the louder it gets. So you can get, a, get it with boost or increase the can timing or whatnot and uh, you'll, get to the, you'll get to the noise you want. However, just be very careful when you mess with that because you can get your motor to overheat or the ESC to overheat because the more can timing you put combined with boost, that's still going to start to get really hot. Especially if you have a, a low uh, final drive ratio on your car, that could become uh, problematic. So you need to monitor the heat on the ESC. Uh, my personal favorite, I have a little TAM gun right here, the little guy, not doing advertising for YOB, but you know. And you know, just take a little reading once in a while. You do a couple laps and check the temperature on top of the ceramic tile right here. Uh, if you can keep it under 140 degrees, you're good to go. That's that's like you know a good temperature to uh, to to run at. You know, usually mine they stay between 100 and 120. Uh, we're talking Fahrenheit here, okay? So all the people in Europe, you know, with Celsius. Um, I'm not good with the conversion, so. Uh, but basically 100, and de 100 degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, you're golden. You don't have to worry about much. If you start going over 140 and you know, then you're going to start monitoring it because you're going to start approaching the limit. Uh, from the factory, I believe the cutoff is set at 220, I believe. But um, I, you know, honestly, I mean, you're going to start feeling it before that. You're going to start feeling it in your, th in your throttle it's going to start feeling inconsistent when you get to really high temperature. So just stop it, let it cool down, check your tune, make sure you have it right. All right, so that pretty much completes the video for now. Um, if you guys have any more questions, if you want to know more details on how to get, you know, a special tune or whatnot, you can contact me, uh, you know, via the comments below, or you can reach out to me through my website over slatters.net. And, uh, you know, you can just uh, check the info down on the description of the video and, uh, you know, just reach out to me. All right, guys. Thank you for watching and enjoy.